Okay. Uh, let's see. Who are we going to talk about today? Summit 10, yes, go ahead. Are you using namespace standard? Yes. Are you pound including F stream? Yes. G E T L I N E. So I can say inf, so I can create a string, string s, I can say get line, is this the form you call? Yes. What is it, inf s delimiter? In condition of a while loop? Um, I was actually trying to, just trying to go off the example you had on the uh, console site. So, yeah, it is the condition in the, in the while loop is while it's not in the file. But then inside the while loop, you yeah, create a float and then a string and a float for the, uh, for the inputs values. And I get line. All right, well, that, that compiles just fine. Now, there are two forms of get line. There's get line that stands alone, like on nine line, on line nine. And then there's a get line kind of like this. Although this one, maybe this is what you're trying to do, and this isn't working. Are you getting that kind of error? <coughs> No matching yeah. mem function call to get line. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, this form on line ten doesn't work with class the uh, an object of type string. It only works with a character array. Um, so the the disadvantage so the input file stream has a, a get line function. You provided a. I guess I should compile it. Make sure it works. Yeah, it works. Um, yeah, so the limitation here is this has to be a pointer to an array of characters. Of course, the big disadvantage there is that you're kind of fixed in the maximum size. This form I like because it uh, S will dynamically grow for as long as necessary until it finds a comma. <clears throat> Um, what I don't know is I don't know what this returns. Let me do, let me see if this compiles. I don't think that's going to work, but let me see. Oh, it does, okay. Um, yeah, so let me, let me take a minute to talk again about streams generally. And... I guess I've talked about the idea that the text is nothing more than a stream of characters. So when you see this, we like to think of it colloquially as being two lines. But as far as the uh, stream handler is concerned, whether that's CN or an input file stream, is really, it looks something like this, where it's uh, high 
comma there, then there's a new line, then there's by comma there, then there's a new line, and that's the end of input. Okay, so he's processing this stuff. Uh, the like the data in line in uh, assignment ten is something like like this, right? Oops. And then these are different cities and so forth. So definitely to to better understand things, you have to think of all this stuff. Boy, there's something wrong with my. Aging here it doesn't want to behave. Oh, I see what it is. Uh, so, right, that's just a single stream of characters is what you need to process. <clears throat> uh, if you go to the August Council website, I spend a fair amount of time talking about the dangers of assuming a number input when in fact it may not be a number input. Um, as far as this assignment goes, uh, that doesn't matter to me if you create a float fl and then you say uh, in vial fl, that's fine. Uh, you just have to have an understanding of where you are in this stream. So if I take this as my stream here from the file and I do line 13, that'll read the 3, the point, the 1, the 4. Uh, the comma is not part of a float point number, so that has not been read in and that's still sitting on the stream waiting to be read in. And so if you then want to read in the city next, you need to first dispose of this comma, and the way of disposing of that comma is with the ignore function, which will ignore a single character. Now you're ready to read in the city, and then another flow. You have a new line you may want to deal with, and so forth. Uh, you don't have to do it this way. You can, of course, do it uh, like this, in which case S is going to contain 3.4, and then you need a way of converting the characters 3.4 to the floating point number 3.4, and that's where you see my strtof and strtod functions being used in that. I have tips and tricks. Uh, probably one of the most perplexing things in that code that you see that I provided is I, I sometimes have a while loop. And I do something like this. I'm going to close up. I need a little more real estate, so I'm going to close that up. Uh, I, I forget all the arguments here. What is what is this? If I use this form of get line, what's the second argument? Um, All right, so it'd be something like this, maybe. I probably have code. You actually you declared another variable, a string called name, and you use that in place of the second argument. Second argument? Right, yeah, instead of, instead of yeah, right. Do I Do I have it uh, input file string dot get line? Oh, I guess I. It's, let's, it's, let's do it this way. Okay, so I'm calling the, the first form of get liner. <clears throat> right, so I'm using the, right, so this is the, the first form. All right, so let me, um, let me talk philosophical, I don't know, phil philosophical isn't the right word. Let me talk about what actually is happening with input file streams. Is that, is a stream, uh, and a lot of this goes for CN as well, which is an input stream, but it's not an input file stream, but they share a lot of the same behaviors. And uh, these input streams have state. 
okay? And the majority of time, the time when life is good, they have a state which is good. They also have a state which is bad, and it can be bad for a number of reasons. Uh, for instance, if I create a flow, forgetting all that while loop stuff, if I, in the first three assignments, create a float fl, and then I say cn fl, and then I try to get in your name, uh, if here, if I type in text, then CN freaks out at this point. And CN goes into what's referred to as bad state, and then CN actually totally ignores this line because it's in a bad way, so to speak, and ignores anything you try to do. <coughs> so, uh, uh, so bad input is one way to send one of these streams into a bad state. Another way of getting into a bad state is to hit up against end of file. And uh, end of file can actually occur from keyboard input as well. If you type a control D, as in dog, that is a keyboard interrupt that is basically signaling the end of input. And as far as CN is concerned, that's the quote end of file. Uh, but let's talk about actual files. <clears throat> so let's say I this is pretend file input or pretend file contents. So let's say that this these this is the contents of my file a three a four in my name T O E D and nothing after. That's the end right here. Uh, if I write a program integer x, uh, I guess I need to borrow some of this stuff. Comment that out. All right. I open up the file. I create an integer x, and then I'm going to say. Um, INF X reads the three and four and nothing else. Now let's say I create a string S and I do INF. This would work with get line as well, but I'm just going to do this. This read in the TODD and nothing else. <clears throat> okay, after these two inputs on line 11 and 13, I am at the end of the file, okay? But if I was then to interrogate INF and say, Are, is your end of file flag set? It would say, no, it's not. Because the funky thing with the way these streams work is uh, as long as you get right up to the end of file, it's not considered end of file until you make an attempt to read from that file and it fails, right? So if I try to read in one more thing, so I go ahead, I'll create two integers here, y. If I try to read in y, then here, slams up against end of file and triggers end of file flag. Okay, so that is that's the the way that that flag actually gets tripped, and you can actually interrogate uh, INF at any point, and you can say if excuse me, that should be INF. If INF, and there's again, this is class, right? Just like you say night K or night K one uh, web counter WC IF stream INF. This is just the name of a variable. So this is a class and it has member functions and one of them is EOF and this returns true or false telling you whether you hit end of file. Uh, and here it is true. If I do it up here, here it is false. Okay, I, I get up to end of file this check is going to be false, but as soon as I slam up against the end of the file, now if I do a check, it'll be true. All right? So when I'm in a file reading multiple things, um, and then let, we can assume there's a new line at the end of all these. If I have multiple lines that I'm reading, Oh, come on. We'll go on 
what am I doing wrong here? Mary. Then what happened is I read in the first line, life is good. Read in the second line, life is good. Read in the third line, life is good. Read in the fourth line, life is good. I'd, I'd put this in a loop, right? And so the way you envision this loop is something like you have while in some condition here, and you read in. Oh, come on, some pass with me. You read in the number, you read in the string. Right, and so the and what you normally have here is it while inf end of file as long as you are not at the end of file, you want to read in a number and a string. Yeah, so I read in 34 uh, 34 Todd, 34 Mark, 34 Mary, 34 Tammy. Now I am at the end of the file, but I've not slammed into the end of the file yet. So what will happen is at the end of my with line, I'm going to come back to the while loop. I'm going to ask this question, is the end of file flag tripped yet? And the answer is no. And what's going to happen is you're going to read in another number here, slams into end of file, and here this is totally ignored because now the input stream is in a bad state. And so what's happening is I end up going through this loop five times. I only have four lines in my file. Okay, so this is the general problem that I'm trying to solve when I put a bunch of crap into the condition of the while loop. And <clears throat> what I'm taking advantage of when I put stuff inside the while loop is, let me back up. So what I want to do is I want actually inside the condition of the while loop, I want to try reading in the number and then ask the question whether I could end a file because it's after I try to read in the file that I slam in, excuse me, I keep mixing my words. It is when I try to read in the number, that is when I slam into end of file. So I want to read in the number inside the condition of the while loop and ask the question immediately afterward if I hit end of file and bail out at that point. If I read the number successfully, life is good. I go in here and I read in the string. If I read the number and I slam into end of file, then the EOF lag says, yes, you're end of file, and I bail out of the loop, and I only go through this thing four times. Okay, so that's the problem I'm solving. The next thing I'm taking advantage of is that uh, all these expressions return something. So when I say 3 plus, 4, thir or 3 plus 4 plus 5 minus 9, think of these as function calls. First, the 3 plus 4 function gets run, and it returns something. And what it returns is it returns 7, right? And now I'm going to call another function which is going to be um, seven, 7 plus 5, and it's going to go away and do something, and it's going to return something, and it's going to return to me 12, and then so on and so forth. Uh, if I asked you what kind of things 3 plus 4 return, you would tell me it returns an integer, and what kind of thing does 7 plus 5 return it returns an integer, and so on and so forth. So now I can ask that same question, of what we're normally doing within with input and output. I'm going to use C out because we're accustomed to seeing it in this form more than uh, input, but the principle is exactly the same. This is an expression that gets evaluated. Okay, so a function goes away and it works with C out and FDSA. Now here's the key question: What kind of thing? What kind of thing does this work? Or does this return? What kind of thing does this return? What's going to happen is whatever it returns, it's got to work with that. So set aside line 14, what has to be at the question marks? Huh? Well, not an integer, because if I put 22, so imagine 16 is aligned by itself. That won't compile, right? Just get 16 by itself. What what do I have to do to make this compile? What do I put here? Yeah. You, you put C out. So the answer to the question, what does this thing return once it's done putting FDSA out to the screen? It returns C out. And then this thing does this deal, and it returns C out so that then this can work, and then this returns C out so this can work. Okay, so that returns an output stream. It works exactly the same way with CN. I can 
uh, input multiple variables. And what it'll do is CN will go through the trouble of reading in X, and then it is CN that gets returned, so then now it can operate on Y, and then CN will be returned so it can operate on Z. Okay? That goes for a uh, function like getLine as well. So if I say cn.getLine, and I'm going to read in a string up to 100 characters up to a pipe or whatever it is, the result of this expression, what, is, what this function, a get line's a member function, what this member function returns is cn. Now we haven't learned C++ on how to do that. There's actually a very specific construct. So you can actually right now go write a mem function for the night class so it returns the night. It's, it's pretty straightforward. We just haven't covered it yet. You'll get it till you throw up in uh, 211. Um, but I can now take advantage of chaining things together. Just like I chain things together on, on lines 11 or line 15, I can chain this together. If I wanted to, I could do another get line, and I, of course, can ask if it's hit end of five. So that's why you see the dot .eof kind of on the end of all this stuff. And that then explains, if I have it here still, this, line 49. So now let's read the whole thing through. And it, it ends up being an order of operations. You have two... Uh, Oh, well, you have three. I'm going to say you have two operators here. You have this dot here and this exclamation point. The exclamation point, remember, is a negation operator for a Boolean. Turn true to false and turn false to true. Uh, but if you check the precedence chart, you'll find the dot occurs a lot sooner, it is far more, uh, has a higher precedence than the exclamation point. So you have to resolve all the dots first. So you call inf.getLine, it gets line, shoves it into name. INF gets returned, and now INF's EOF function gets called. It returns a Boolean, and then we're negating the value of that Boolean. So most of the time through, I get a name, life is good. Ask, are we at end of file? That's going to say no or false, and the exclamation point is going to turn that to true. So I, as long as I'm getting good input, this while loop is going to keep going. As soon as this get line slams into end of file, it's going to trip that flag. I'll immediately ask, have you hit end file? It will say, yes, I have. I negate the yes, I have. That turns it to false. And now, while false, I bail out of my loop. And life is good. I've read in exactly what I need to read in. Uh, so if you do the homework this way, what you have to do is here, I would have to give my example. Here, I would convert name to a number. And then I would read in uh, city name, and here, I shouldn't use the name, convert name, right, I'm just referring to this variable right here. Uh, read in city name, read in the second rainfall total. Print out line of report. All right. Uh, if you don't want to do the get line and the convert, you could read it directly into an integer. How does that work? I, I once again, can take advantage of the fact that if I create a float fl, I can do this with my input file. I can do this, and let me ask again: what uh, what is the what is returned from the expression on line fifty? A file stream is returned. And which file stream specifically? Mm -hmm. So you're allowed to do that, and then after you do that, ask it, did you hit into file? And now you're going to say that C++ is an ugly language, and you correct. But that works just fine. So there I get my first number. Then I can go ahead and basically copy and paste this, do I, why? Get my first number, read in the city, read in the second rainfall total, print out the line of the report, jump back up, read in my, on the next line, read in the rainfall total, city name, second rainfall total, print out a line of the report, so on and so forth. Eventually, I'm going to hit the end of file. I come up here, it tries to read, it slams into end of file, trip in the flag. I immediately ask, did you hit end of file? It says yes, and I forgot this. You need the exclamation point. Uh, you would need the, yeah, sure. So, so before you read in the city name, you'd want to ignore that comma. 
So I, I'm definitely just sketching it out. Uh, but yeah, you need to ignore the commas in the right place. And um, yeah. Any questions on that? Yes. On the get line version of the while loop, you have this converting name to a number. So you just don't set name to a number in the get line. So why 56 and 58 instead of 50? 56 and 58 is the two-step process to convert, read in as a string, convert it as a number. You're asking, why do I do that instead of just reading in the number directly as I did in line 50? Yeah. Uh, the answer to that question is that in the grand scheme of things, lines 56 and 58 is safer. Because if the way I have the code written right now, if for some reason that file is a little bit corrupted and there's text there and not a floating point number as I'm expecting, INF suddenly goes into a bad state, hasn't hit end of file, it goes into a bad state, and now you'll find yourself looping about 10,000 times a second until you hit control C. So <clears throat> one, thing that's, one thing that's guaranteed about uh, files generally is that they have a stream of characters. Right? Now whether they're digits or whether they're alphanumeric characters or, or symbols, uh, you guarantee that they're bytes, right? They're 200, they're uh, 8 bits, and this is going to read series of 8 bit bytes regardless of type, so it's a little bit safer. My, my input file stream isn't going to go bad by virtue of the kind of thing in the file. So what, what's not said here is I'd normally do some error checking. I'd try convert a name to a number, and I'd ask, did you convert successfully, or was there an issue? And if there's an issue, then I'd take some sort of error reporting step or something like that. Uh, but the difference is I have control as a programmer over what's happening all the time on the 50, line 56 version, whereas I lose control potentially on line 50. Uh, it, it's certainly, I'll, I'll give you it's rather nuanced. I'm definitely not grading you on this at this point. It's something that you become uh, more aware of and begin coding more defensively as you progress in the series of programming courses into the upper division courses. But I just like giving you that extra love because that's who I am. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? All right. I'm going to move that. So, assignment 10 help, not CPP. It's only going to be helpful for those who are in the classroom now or actually watch the screencast. I do get people who do neither, and they come to me asking, why is my assignment not working? And it looks almost exactly like this right here. Uh, so it's only helpful if you have the contest. What we need to talk about now is more of this project I'm looking at. What I'm looking at for the due date of the project is after labs, uh, after the first set of labs, the beginning of next week. So Monday, Tuesday lab, you can get this weekend, today in class, Friday in class, You'll be able to work on it this weekend. You'll be able to ask questions on Monday as well as work on it in laps Monday and Tuesday. Then looking at like Tuesday night, Wednesday morning ish for it being due. Make it Wednesday next week. Uh, all right. Yeah, I could probably make it Wednesday night for the 111 next folks. <coughs> Uh, it's, so given what we, we've done so far on this, uh, does anyone have any questions to have a look at this? Yes? Yeah, I think you'll be, so you'll, uh, the depot will keep track of a vector of employees and a vector of unassigned equipment. The, each employee will maintain a set of exceptions. 
so yeah, two vectors in a set, it looks like, amongst all the, the various classes here. <clears throat> but we still, so we, we have an idea of how this is all fitting together now, but we have a less clear idea of what exactly we're doing with it all. So in order to help ferret that out, We'll use one of these beauties. Well, what do we want to call these? So, uh, there are a couple sequences, I think. Sequences. I would say one is the startup initialization. And two is the report generation. I have uh, I have a, a mm, how do I want to do this? Maybe we we'll do the report generation first. So. We have our depot, we have Bob with the, what does Bob have as equipment? Uh, the hammer. And Bob also has the nail. They're doled out on a one by one basis. Make sure there's, they're Cost conscious, don't want to waste. Just one nail. He has to drive back to the shop to get a second one when he's ready for it. And the uh, the shovel is unassigned. <clears throat> now, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna erase. I need I need more of these objects than I have room for, so I'm gonna erase the nail. Let's call this. Uh, let's look at our, back at our chart. Oops. It's not for me. I know my fractions. That's for my daughter. There we go. That's for me. Uh, so the employee <coughs> has a vector of equipment, right? So this would be, I'm going to call this Bob's tools, and this is a vector. So this is specifically, I don't think I can draw on this, no. Alright, sorry for the jarring end to that video. I had some technical troubles after I stopped the recording and unfortunately lost the last several minutes of the video. The reason I'm appending myself now is that of course what got cut off was the secret word of the day so you can see that on your screen now it is tempest um, with that I will see you on Friday thank you